So, Pentecost, Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, is where we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit and the giving of the Holy Spirit, and it being manifested among us, the disciples of Yahweh. So on this day of Pentecost, there was something that I really wanted to focus on in the story of Acts 2. Acts 2, 2 through 4 says, Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. So what I wanted to focus on was in Acts 2, 2, where it says there was a roaring of a mighty windstorm. This mighty windstorm in other um, versions, it says great wind that filled the room where they sat. And although this great wind wasn't seen, it was felt, and it was heard, and it was strongly present. Like what was talked about during the Sabbath service just yesterday, um, it said, we were talking about how Yahweh uses things around us to help us further comprehend his concepts and gain spiritual understanding through the physical world that he made. And the wind, like Yahweh, is not seen, but it's still felt, and it's still heard, and it's still strongly present. This wind, being compared to, to Yahweh, can be seen in many verses, one of them being John 3 in the case of Nicodemus and Yahshua. So Nicodemus was a really um, big teacher back then, and he was a very wise man. And he was talking to Yahshua in, this, in, in John 3 and kept asking a lot of questions and was really just really curious, like asking a whole bunch of questions to Yahshua, looking for answers. And... Yahshua answered him, saying, Do not be surprised that I have told you. You must be born again, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it is coming from and where it is going. So is it with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus kept asking questions, and he said to him, How can these things be possible? And Yeshua answered him, saying, You, Nicodemus, are the great and well-known teacher of Israel, and yet you do not know or understand these things from Scripture. And Yeshua said, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, we speak only of what we absolutely know. He, speak, he said, we speak only... of what we absolutely know and testify of what we actually see as eyewitnesses. And, I, and still, you, Nicodemus, reject our evidence and do not accept our testimony. See, if I have told you earthly things, that is, things that happen right here on earth, and you do not believe, how will you trust me if I show you heavenly things? In this verse, Nicodemus is basically doubting and asking all these questions, and he's saying, we do not know or understand everything of Yahweh. We do not see Yahweh, but we can hear from him, and he's still strongly present, even if he can't be absolutely prove it, proven or it's not seen by the eyes. Or it's still an absolute truth. But what I wanted to focus on more in this verse was the analogy between the wind and Yahweh, the things of Yahweh. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound but you do not know where it is coming from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. This roaring wind that entered the room on the day of Pentecost is acknowledged as the Holy Spirit. Yahweh our God in spirit form, and it is a beautiful analogy. The wind, like Yahweh, is not seen, but it is still felt, it is still heard, and it is still strongly present. Just like although we can't see the air that we breathe, it still exists, and it is the very thing that is sustaining us, giving us life, and keeping us alive by Yahweh. On the day of Pentecost, there was a strong wind, a great wind that was roaring, and I like to visualize this wind as Yahweh's breath. So what I wanted to talk about today was the strong wind. So how I like to view it is when you put your hand in front of your mouth and you speak, you can feel your breath against your hand and it's followed by your voice when you speak. This wind entering the room, I like to imagine as Yahweh's breath, because as he opened his mouth, he spoke through his vessels. He opened his mouth and started to speak through them, and they be began speaking in, tongue, in tongues. As he spoke through them, his breath came first and hit, you could feel it hitting your hand. It came into the room first. 
And then they began speaking in tongues and speaking Yahweh's words. The spirit is often referred to as breath. As we can see in John 20, 22, it says, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Job 27, three, as long as my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. And John 34, if he should set his heart to it and gather to himself his spirit and his breath. So as we can see, the spirit is oftentimes compared to breath and known as the heir of Yahweh. But Yahweh's breath, this spirit bringing breath, is life bringing. And as can be seen with Adam in the garden, Yahweh breathed life into Adam, breathed life into him, made him living. As can be seen with Ezekiel in the dry bones, Yahweh breathed his spirit upon them. As, we can, as can be seen also with us who are Holy Spirit filled and have the breath of the spirit within us and we can achieve eternal life in the kingdom of heaven because of Yahweh's breath was breathed into us and we are Holy Spirit filled. The spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Yahweh's breath is life bringing. This is the breath of everything that runs through our blood. This is the breath that keeps our cells functioning, keeps us living. This breath, this oxygen that we breathe is unseen but very much real and without it, we would be dead. Without oxygen, your body's organs shut down and can't function and death is the end result. This is why you must stay filled with oxygen, filled with the Holy Spirit. This is why you must maintain a steady flow of oxygen throughout your body, a steady flow of the Holy Spirit throughout your body. To be properly functioning vessel of Yahweh, you must have the Holy Spirit, the holy breath of Yahweh, the life bringing breath of Yahweh. You must keep breathing and being spiritually alive in Yahweh or else you will be dead. This coronavirus is a respiratory disease that like Inez said, is not just threatening our physical wellness but also our spiritual wellness. COVID is disruptive to our spirits. It keeps us out of church and it, it, and it keeps us away from, and sometimes it distracts us from the things of Yahweh. It's all consuming and it keeps our minds off of the real priority, which is Yahweh, by running us with fear. This George Floyd protest, I can't breathe, the same thing that happened not too long ago with another man named Eric Garner, dealing with police brutality and where their last words were, I can't breathe. Saints, I ask you, is the Holy Spirit working within you? Can you breathe? Are you breathing the Holy Spirit? Are you living off the Holy Spirit, the life bringing breath of Yahweh? Can you breathe, saints? Or are you grasping, gasping for the life of it, bringing air of the Holy Spirit? Or are you Holy Spirit deprived of the life bringing air? Is your body shutting down or not functioning as Yahweh would have it to be? Or are you dying because you are not getting the air that you need? Open yourself up to hear the roaring winds of Yahweh. Listen to the spirit of Yahweh that is entering the room. Allow it to overflow you and use you like the vessel of Yahweh that you were meant to be so that the word of Yahweh can be heard and spoken, just like the disciples spoke in tongues. Every, let everything that has breath praise Yahweh. So can we sing, um, it's your breath in our lungs. And that's all.